Time starts now. Right. Sort of, yes. You are a director, you're an actor, you're a comedian, you're even a librettist. Mm. What's it like being Stephen Fry? <laughs> I can't compare it to being anything else, uh, except through the second-hand testimony of literature memoirs and uh, talking to people, obviously, but I think it's pretty much the same experience, to be honest. I, I don't think I think any more highly of myself than uh, most people think of themselves. I know I come across as thinking more highly of myself, because <laughs> I have a smug air that I've done everything, believe me, short of actually cutting my face open to try and get rid of, but I think it's an attempt to be smiley like my mother, that I look complacent instead. In fact, I'm about to play the um, Cheshire Cat for an for a, uh, animated version of, uh, of Alice in Wonderland, which is probably pretty, uh, pretty appropriate. You mentioned your mother. What was your childhood like? Did you have a happy childhood? Yeah, looking back on it, it was happy. Of course, I didn't think of it as happy at the time. I don't think children until a certain age are really capable of distinguishing between happiness and misery, except in the most intense forms of sunshine and storms, you know, the way a child will sob their heart out at one minute and then be have con forgotten about it. But actual sort of chronic unhappiness, no, I didn't f suffer from that. Um, I had a stormy relationship with my father in particular, and I uh, was sent away to a boarding school at the age of seven, 200 miles from home, which always sounds like cruelty in this day and age, though in fact I didn't particularly resent that, I just resented authority. Is it true that you were twice expelled from school? Yes, I was expelled from, from schools and uh, ended up in prison and had a sort of very, very turbulent teenage. So, um, How did that mark you as a human being? It's very hard to say. I, I think to some extent it, it... A problem was that I was too too quick, too facile at exams and things. I never stopped to think much, particularly. And, uh, because things turned disastrous, I then had to decide whether I, I wanted to continue in a downward spiral into you know, crime and other such horrors, or whether I wanted to pull myself up by my bootstraps, as it were. I was about 18 at the time, and I decided to pull myself up. So I learnt to work. And that has stood me in good stead ever since, that I can concentrate. Now you've achieved more than almost anyone, if not everyone else, in television. What has made you proudest, though, of all the different projects you've worked on? Or what have you enjoyed? Gosh, it's very hard to say. Enjoyment? Um, I mean, it, in a sense, you, 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 what, what you are, the audience, the people who follow you are a mirror. And, and you, you look into their eyes and see yourself back, and, and it's whether they decide what you've enjoyed. In a strange kind of way, I enjoy what has given most pleasure. You know, in fact, one has a really good time making all kinds of films and projects that are a disaster, or at least, if not a disaster, not, don't have much impact. But I enjoy the pleasure that Blackadder has given people, or Jeeves and Worcester, or Fry and Laurie, or, um, you know, some of the films like Wild. I, I obviously choose, enjoyed though, that. If you had to choose, at the point of a gun, one facet of your career to stick with, would it be acting? Would it be directing? Would it be comedy? Would it be writing? Well, which leg would you like me to cut off of <laughs> you? That's like asking that. But uh, I suppose my deepest, most cherished memory, for all kinds of reasons, is really doing a bit of Fry and Laurie with Hugh, my long-time partner. And You're still even, very good friends. Even longer-time friend, exactly. And, um, uh, and we talk a lot about it going back and doing things. We know that, really, the, 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 the best is past in that field. But it did give us enormous pleasure and continues to give us pleasure. We remind ourselves of moments in it. So well, that's probably the highest thing, because that's writing and performing, of course. You've been in New Zealand working with wildlife. Mm -hmm. What sort of animal do you see yourself as? <laughs> I'd like to be a cute, dart, nippy little thing, but unfortunately I'm a great lumbering hippopotamus. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a novel called The Hippopotamus, and I think that's probably what I am. Clock is ticking. Are you, you've worked with a whole range of different stars, and you're friends with lots of them. Are you ever starstruck? Oh, gosh, yes, all the time. All the time, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm particularly starstruck by those who are in a field completely different to mine because what they can do is such a mystery. So if I meet a sports person, then I'm thrilled. So you I love know, cricket? I love cricket, but I remember meeting Man Martini Navratilova and I could barely speak. Uh, same when I first met Ian Botham when I was in my you know, 20s. Do you think we can win back the Ashes in 2009? Yes, I think we can. I mean, Australia's changing. They're going to try so hard that you just can't believe, but we can. Secret skills that we don't know you have. have you got... <laughs> I like doing magic. I mean, I, you, you may, people may know I did that because I once did a magic trick with Hugh, funnily enough, on Wogan years ago. One thing that you would change about British life if you could click your fingers right now? Um, I, the general negativity would be one thing, I think, and, uh, yeah, it's that. It's people saying no too much. And are you happy with life at the moment? I think so. 
Yeah, don't ask me tomorrow, and I probably wasn't yesterday, but today I seem to be. Time is up. Really nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you.